So welcome back to more machine at Sham Fun. It seems a lot of people really like what I did so far to the machine and now driven by most 12.2 is out and it brings tons of more new features to this funny little device. So make sure you get one. Okay, let's dive into what is new. So first let's have a look at the drum mode. And yeah, it's not only the drum mode. I added lots of new sequences and play modes and they are now selected still with the step and the pad mode, but you can keep now press those buttons. So for the step modes, you have now six different sequences. And let's start slow with the drum sequencer, which is now on number four so these three are drum sequences or intended to be used with drums you can use it with any sound uh, you want and the first three are more intended to be used for notes but this is only a guideline you can use the sequences with whatever sound you want so let's go to the fourth one which is the good old drum sequencer you are aware with so let's create a new clip with that first thing you also notice is that the unused buttons are now shown in gray so it gives you a little bit more orientation which are the where this square is if you have less than the 16 sounds the rest works still the same you can create here your your drum sounds and one thing to note with that is now you have also velocity so before that we can use here the length and if you use machine you have here also the option to set change the velocity because the pads are sadly not velocity sensitive so what you can now do is to press the lock key to switch to the velocity mode so here in the velocity mode you have here the 16 different velocity settings so uh, let's go to the loudest one which is 16 or you can go to a very low one and we can check that here in Bitwig. if you look here at the notes you see that the other notes are more silent in that velocity setting these settings are available in all play modes and all sequencer modes but only displayed here in the drum mode so if you're in a note sequencer let's go here in the note sequencer which is the first one here uh, you don't have this information so here you can keep the lock key pressed and if you keep it pressed you also get this menu so here you can now change to a higher value and then release it and now the notes are used with that velocity if you turn lock off it will always use the maximum velocity and if you enable it it uses this lower velocity you might have set here in that settings so it's also possible quickly to switch between different velocities the loudest one and a softer one if you quickly want to program something there are more drum modes because we are in drum mode uh, because with the normal drum mode uh, let's go here with normal drum mode you only see one sound at a time which you can edit but sometimes you want to edit multiple sounds at once so these are provided with the other two modes this one gives you four different sounds so we see here let's go back here to our maximum sound volume let's make them louder as well and here you can add for example the snare let's see what we have here i guess some hi-hat maybe and you can very quickly edit sounds like this in that grid as well no oh, hi-hat is where is the hi-hat there is a hi-hat and you can also now switch with the cursor keys. You can switch the different ranges of notes. So if we go here to the drum machine, you see that I went up now four. So you can also select now easily here with the cursor keys, the setting. Before that, you had to use here the tune and knob, which still works, but that one I think is easier to do. And the other mode here is the variation in eight. So here you even see eight different sounds, but it's it's a shorter distance here, but you can also switch pages here with the cursor keys now left, right. So here you can go to the second page and so on and back as well. And what I also did not show in the last video, which I forgot is note repeat, which gives you some interesting ideas and things. Let's create a new clip, an empty one. Let's go to back to the normal drum mode. Okay, and here you can, oh, we are recording already, so let's create a new one. And uh, let's turn off, 
that's an overdub. So if you use now note repeat and you can long press note repeat to change the settings as well. So here you can change the octaves because it's actually an arpeggiator. Here you can set the repeat interval and here you can change the length of the notes as well. And this one changes the different arpeggiator modes. First thing you can do is use it as normally as you use uh, such a note repeat. But since it's an arpeggiator, it's also fun to play multiple notes at once, which gives you interesting beats. so much for the note repeat so these has been here the drum sequences now we already saw the note sequencer in the last tutorial so let's have a look to the other two ones let's first go to the third which is the raindrop sequencer which i dig a lot and for example let's go here but let's get a more usable sound so let's go here to the browser and let's say we want to have let's go to everything and we want to have some more belly sound bell sound because this makes always fun maybe that one or that one let's go with that sound okay so let's go here now to the raindrop sequencer and let's first create the clip for that and what we can do now is you can press here and when it hits the bottom note, the sound is played. But especially for the, as you see, it's jumping around because you need a longer clip. So let's create here. So let's create longer clips for that. Let's go with 16 bars. That makes more sense with that feature because then it, it repeats the same way. So very interesting already. Let's go up. So also with the cursor keys, you can transpose now. Let's create a higher node. And even more higher nodes. So you can create very interesting rhythmic patterns just by experimenting a bit it's a bit too high let's go back to the drums Okay, so much for that sound. Let's create here a shorter pattern length. Let's go back to one bar or yeah, one bar. So the final sequencer for that, let's create a new instrument track with that. And for the instrument track, we are looking for a new device. So what can we go for? Let's go for something. Yeah, let's go with a nice uh, K1 choir. And the last sequencer mode here is, is a poly sequencer, uh, which allows you, let's maybe get, make a different color so you can see it better. So in the lower part, you can play as in the play mode in the upper, you can program the beats. So let's go for, let's try something out. We need to put it higher. Ah, oh, not repeat still on new one okay so what you can do you can play in lower part of the chord let's go with that that one and then you can program that chord
And you can play a different one. So I think you get the idea. There are also more play modes. So here, if you go on the play mode on a pad, you have now four. So that one is a normal play mode. You can now also change the layout of a bit. So this one goes up in steps of four. If you go to the right, you can change it to steps of four in the other direction. Then in steps of third, sequential and there have many different layouts which you can try out. The next one is a, a chords mode. So there are different chord variations which are in the document which one is one first one is just a normal triad so you go here also up so here you have uh, the the base notes uh, of the current selected um, scale and there you can play the chords as well and as i said look up in the manual which one uh, are on a different rows you have different chord variations uh, for your current scale next one is normal piano layout so So if you prefer something like that here, play C minor, D minor. So it's the usual layout. If you're more used to that, you can do that as well. And the last one is a 64 drum grid. Let's go here to that. So you can here play up to 64 drum sounds. We have here only those 12 sounds. If you have more, you have more here available for playing your drums. And what you might have also have noticed, let's go back here, is that if you switch here between the different tracks, it remembers your last selected sequence or a few. So this is uh, pretty helpful if you quickly want to program something and go back, for example, to the drums. Your drum mode is still here available as you selected it before. Also some uh, smaller tweaks, if you go back here, here to the session view if you toggle here the direction the cursor keys move now in the same direction as the layout is so it's a little bit easier for orientation and also i noticed before that you cannot couldn't change the volume of sand tracks so these are only instrument and audio tracks and if you go want to go to a sand now you can now press shift and aux and then this toggles to the sand track so this is now my delay track i have and here you can now also change the level as well as the panorama of the sand track and if you want to toggle back a shift and aux again and you're back to your normal instrument and audio tracks there are two settings added some people did like the red ones for the record enabled uh, track so if you enable your record track you will see the record enabled in red but if you don't like that it's now possible to switch that off so if you go here to the controller section to your machine jam and there you can say display clips of record enabled tracks in red and you can turn it off so then it's gone if you prefer that one a similar one is here if if we go into the drum, here we are, drum layout. So you see now here the empty pads are now displayed in gray. And you can also turn that off if you want, enable that one. And then they are also black if you like that more. Poo, so tons of new stuff in that. And I hope you dig it and like it and make some funky music.